The fact that cities that are home to 14 million Americans are going down faster than Melania did to get her green card is a weird science effect that boggles my mind. We talk about the consequences of climate change a lot, and one of those biggest consequences is coastal flooding. And while there's definitely worse things than turning Florida into the lost city of Atlantis, it turns out that even though we knew that this was going to affect millions and millions of people, scientists still gravely underestimated how bad the sinking of cities is going to be. And despite what you initially think, it's not because they underestimated the answer to Johnny Cash's question of how high is the water pop up because while rising sea levels are bad sinking cities are 10 times worse and that was something they forgot to factor now it may sound like we're splitting hairs right rising sea levels in a sinking city are the same thing it's getting covered with water but no it's not the same it's not that cities are going to be flooded with seawater it's that cities are literally sinking into the sea you see despite the term there's really no such thing as solid ground sure below our feet there's a lot of rock and dirt but there's also air and water and depending on a countless number number of factors, that solid ground can get pretty squishy and expand or compact. See, like around the time of the last ice age, there was a giant glacier on the northern part of North America, and all of that weight pushed places like New York and Pennsylvania down, and like a teeter-totter, it pushed places like South Carolina and Georgia up. But after the ice melted, that teeter-totter started leveling back out, and the southeast sunk, and the northeast rose. And while the continent was still experiencing some of that, people came along and did what we do best. We fucked shit up. We dammed up rivers, we dug wells, and we built shit on really soft ground. And this has had some pretty dire consequences because the Northeast, you know, New York, Pennsylvania, that was previously rising, has started going down. And the Southeast, which was already sinking, started sinking faster and is starting to give a whole new meaning to the Deep South. But how are wells and dams making it hard for cities to keep their heads above water? And that is a damn good question. You see, most land masses that our cities are built on are like a waterbed. And we have got trillions of gallons of groundwater underneath the sheets. But the millions of people on top of these waterbeds needs water to drink and shower with and cook and have pool parties. And to get them that water, we've stuck a bunch of straws into these waterbeds. And it turns out when you've got millions of people sucking all the water out of the waterbed, the waterbed starts to deflate and the people on top of it start to sink. Who would have fucking thunk? And then with climate change causing droughts, it exacerbates these problems because not only are these aquifers not getting replenished, we're also having to draw more water for things that used to be provided naturally, like rainwater for agriculture. And then the problem gets worse because as these aquifers deflate and the ground settles on top of them, when we do get rain to replenish them, that groundwater stays closer to the surface because those aquifers have been squished like a pop can and there's less space for the water to filter down into them. This means that when you get massive storms, well, yes, the flooding from the ocean and the rivers overflowing is a big deal. You now need to worry about just the ground underneath you flooding. That's all because there's less space underground for the water to go, so it stays on top. But what do the damn dams have to do with it? Well, the world is constantly changing and lately it's been changing faster than ever. The land as we know it was created by a balance of all sorts of different things. The ocean tides and storms erode beaches and wetlands, and rivers wash down sediment to replace them, creating a balance. But when we dam a river, we dam up all of that sediment. And as rising sea levels and super storms have been supercharged by climate change and have increased the speed of erosion, we've also slowed down the replacement of all of that erosion by damming up all of the sediment. And without that sediment being replaced, there's just literally less ground, and that causes more compaction and sinking. And the deeper a city sinks, the more the sea can swallow. And at the rate we're going, within the next 50 50 years, 14 million Americans could be reenacting Waterworld. So this isn't like a future generations problem, this is a millennials and Gen Z's lifetime problem. Thankfully, since this problem has been identified, there's a number of steps that can be taken to reduce the impact on infrastructure and people. Many cities have great water recycling systems now where they don't need to draw nearly as much groundwater. Construction of new infrastructure is taking into account higher water levels and how to deal with that. And seawalls and levees are being constructed all over the world to help minimize coastal flooding. But Ultimately, this isn't a if it happens, it's a when it happens, how much of the impact can we minimize at this point? And at the rate we're going, treating climate change and environmental problems like a tomorrow's thing we can put off and procrastinate on rather than a yesterday's problem we've ignored, it ain't looking great. And while we can find some enjoyment in watching the rich fuckers who created these messes beach mansions slip beneath the surface in some small amount of karmic irony, the sad part is they'll still be the ones least affected because the vast majority, the literal billions of people around the world who live in these regions, they don't have the money to move or the mountain ski homes to move to. So when they lose the cities that they live in, they lose literally everything. And that is pretty fucking sad. And the fact that cities being swallowed by the sea will be made more severe by subterranean shifts causing the soil to sink and slip beneath the surface, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.